alphabetics. Doing puzzles can be a great way of practicing our reasoning and problem-solving skills. Let's see how this works with a classic type of puzzle called an alphametic. What's an alphametic? Let's see what Wikipedia has to say. Traditionally, each letter should represent a different digit, and as in ordinary arithmetic notation, the leading digit of a multi-digit number must not be zero. A good puzzle should have a unique solution and the letters should make up a phrase such as in the example above. I know this probably looks impossible, but let's see if we can at least eliminate a couple of possibilities. For instance, we know that neither M nor S can be zero because both of those digits occur at the beginning of the numbers and we don't normally start numbers with zero. That's a good start. Now let's try to narrow these numbers down a little bit further. Think about the biggest number M can be. The biggest four digit number is 9999. So the biggest five digit number you can get by adding two four-digit numbers is 19,999. So the biggest number M can be is 1, and since we already know that M is greater than 0, that means M has to be 1. Another useful technique when doing complicated problems is to make sure you get new information down on paper as soon as you come up with it. In this case, let's replace M with 1 in our problem. Now we're getting somewhere. Since the biggest number technique works so well to finding M, let's see how it works on O. The biggest four-digit number as we just mentioned, was 9,999. The biggest four-digit number that starts with 1 is 1,999. If you add those two numbers together, you get 11,998. So, the biggest digit O can be is 1. But since 1 is taken, O has to equal zero. Let's take a moment and label the columns so we can keep track of what we're doing. Normally we do this at the beginning, but better late than never. Now, let's see if we can do a little more narrowing down. One of the things, perhaps the main thing, that complicates this problem is that we don't know when a 1 is carried from one column to another. If we were just having S plus 1 and got 10, we would know that S was 9. Unfortunately, we can't rule out the possibility that 1 was carried over from the column before, which would mean that S would be 8. Fortunately, we do know that there was carrying from column 2 to column 3. Remember, column 2 is the one that has N plus R equals E, or adds up to E, possibly plus something, and column 3 is the one that has E on the top. So, we know there was carrying in that column, because if there wasn't, that would give us E plus 0 equals E. I mean, if nothing was carried over to it, and you add 0, you'll come up with the same number. Since E and N are different numbers, we know something was carried. We know 
one was carried. Since we know one was carried from column two, that means we have one plus e plus zero equals n. Or if we rearrange this a little, n equals e plus one. We could have made it e equals n minus one. It would have meant the same thing. But let's stick with n equals e plus one just to be consistent. Now we have already used zero and one so the smallest e can be is 2. And since n is e plus 1, n has to be greater than 2, at least 3. On the other side, the biggest n can be is 9. Biggest any digit can be is 9. So that means e has to be less than 9, or at most 8. If e is less than 9, that means e plus 1 is less than 10. So nothing is carried over to column 4. So we have s plus 1 equals 10. Therefore, s equals 9. Now we're making some progress. Let's go back to n equals e plus 1. And the fact that a 1 was carried from column 2 to column 3. So we know that when we add n plus r, we have to carry a 1 over to the next column. Therefore, n plus r equals e plus 10. Let's, let's stop for a second. Let's just think about what we're saying here. When we have carrying, that means that when you add the two numbers, you get a two-digit number, right? It's like, for example, if you add oh, 08 and 9, you'd get 17, which is 10 plus 7. Take a minute, look at this, make sure you're comfortable with it. Now, let's go back. We know that when we add n plus r, we have to carry a 10 over, or actually a 1 over to the next column. Therefore, n plus r equals e plus 10. Or if there's carrying from column 1, say we lots of possibilities here. If there's carrying from column 1, n plus r plus 1 equals e plus 10. I know this can be a bit confusing, so once again, take a minute, look at this, pause the tape if you need to, and make sure you're comfortable with everything we've set up to this point. You might even want to run the video back a couple of minutes and go through this explanation again. Of course, a few minutes ago, we showed that n equals e plus 1, so we can just do a little substitution and replace n with e plus 1. They equal each other, so wherever we have one, we can write the other. And thus, the problem goes from three variables to just two. Still more than we'd like, but definitely an improvement. Even better, we can simplify these two equations by subtracting e from both sides giving us r equals 9 or r equals 8 and since 9 is taken r equals 8 now we are officially halfway through the problem 0 1 9 8 are taken that means the remaining four letters have to have values between 2 and 7. What's more, since n is 1 more than e, we know n can't be 2. And since e is 1 less than n, we know e can't be 7.
when we add D and E, do we carry a 1 over to the next column? Be nice if we knew that. Let's see if we can figure this out. We know that N plus 8 is greater than 10. So that if the first column doesn't carry over, that gives us N plus 8 equals E plus 10. And if a 1 is carried, we get N plus 8 plus 1 equals E plus 10. Once again, might want to pause the video. Think about this for a second if you're still a little bit confused. If we substitute E plus 10 for N, we get E plus 1 plus 8 equals E plus 10. Or, if we've got carrying, E plus 1 plus 8 plus 1 equals E plus 10. Well, you might see where we're going with this. If you simplify this, subtract the E's from both sides, collect the other numbers, the top equation, E plus 1 plus 8 equals E plus 10, would come out to be 9 equals 10. It's not a good answer. The second equation would give us 10 equals 10. That's the one we want to go with. So, yes, we did have a 1 carried over from, the, from column 1, starts with D on the top, to column 2, which has the N on the top. Now we have a good set of equations to work from. Okay. Up until this point, we have avoided what's known as an exhaustive search, running through all of the possibilities for some number. Now, though, we have things narrowed down enough so that it might not be a bad option. Let's take a look at E and run through all of the different numbers it could be. Try E equals 2. Since y is greater than 1, d would have to be greater than 9 for this to be carried over. We can't have a digit greater than 9, so this is impossible. e cannot equal 2. How about e equals 3? Reasoning here looks a lot like the reasoning on the previous example. y plus 10 has got to be at least 12, which would mean that if E were 3, D would have to be at least 9. And since 9 is already taken, that wouldn't work either. So E is not 3. How about E equals 4? Well, using the same logic, that would mean D would have to be 8 or 9. And since both 8 and 9 are taken, E cannot be 4. Let's try equals 5. In this case, D would have to be at least 7. And since that is also the most D could be, that would mean that D would be exactly 7, which would make N 6. That one actually looks pretty good. It's possible that E is 5. But before we say that definitely, let's check one more option here. What about E equals 6? Well, as mentioned before, Y plus 10 has got to be 12 or greater, which would mean that for E to be 6, D would have to be 6 or 7. And since we're arguing what would happen if E was 6. That means D couldn't be 6, which leaves D equals 7. But N is 1 more than E. So if E is 6, N would have to be 7 too. And D and N can't both be the same digit. So we've just ruled out 
e equals 6. Now we've got e equals 5. That was the only possibility in our exhaustive search that worked. Now let's start plugging that in and see what other numbers we can find. Well, the first one's really easy. It's n because n equals e plus 1. So if e is 5, n is 6. Now, how about the last two, d and y? Well, d plus y, I'm sorry, back up a little bit. d plus 5 equals y plus 10, because we know 1 was carried over there. Now, we have four numbers left, 2, 3, 4, and 7. And we know that d plus 5 has got to be greater than 10. Well, the only number that would work for that would be 7. So that gives us d equals 7. 7 plus 5 equals 12. That would make y equal to 2. Now, take a look at the puzzle with all these numbers plugged in. Check it out. Probably a good time to use a calculator. And confirm to your own satisfaction that that is the correct answer. See, it was hard, but probably not as difficult as you thought. Take a minute, review through these, Think about what you did, and then try to think about how that applies to other problems. For more videos, tips, resources, or you can join the conversation at You Do the Math K Through Calculus at You Do the Math K Through Calculus dot blogspot dot com.